welcome the most honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica. Good morning. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Thank you. Please be seated. The Most Honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica, Senator the Honorable Aubin Hill, Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, members of the Diplomatic Corps and international organizations, Mr. Anthony Hilton, Member of Parliament and Opposition Spokesperson on Industry, Investment and Global Logistics, his Worship the Mayor, Senator Councillor Delroy Williams, Mayor of Kingston. I'm looking to see if he's here. I haven't seen him as yet. Ms. Christine Cabot, Executive Vice President of Operations and Group Assets, CMA, CGM, and Chairman, Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited. Mr. Alok Jan, Chairman of the Port Authority of Jamaica. Professor the Honorable Gordon Shirley, President and CEO, Port Authority of Jamaica. Captain Jean J. Mayerski, CEO, Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited, shipping communities, special guests, representatives of partnering government agencies and other stakeholders, Kingston Wharves team members, I see students in the back, friends of the media, all ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the ribbon cutting ceremony of the new straddle carriers right here of the Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited. I don't know about you, I'm feeling excited and I think we should give everybody a round of applause. I want to take the opportunity before we continue to acknowledge the DJ Keith who did such a fantastic job. We got Bob Marley, we had Dennis Brown, we had Garnet Silk, Thank you so very much for that lovely song selection. For those of you who do not know me, I am Terry Carell Reed. I have the pleasure, the privilege of serving you in the capacity of host. Now, I do understand that I'm probably the only one standing under the tent with a hard hat. And I can explain. Number one, how many hosts can say that they've ever hosted an event in cool, protective gear? I'll wait. None. Number two, if I were to remove this hard hat, I would then resemble a sense of all. So I'm keeping it on for protective purposes, 
but I'm also making sure that whatever shift has gone on under the helmet, it is all good. Now, why are we here? In 2019, as I drove in and we went through all of the different um, security uh, paths, in 2019, Toyota Jamaica was doing, they were bringing in their new RAV4s with the new shape. And we partnered together to do a three-part ad, you know, and we wanted to use a Mission Impossible theme, you know. Doom, 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 doom. I got my protective gear, I got my binoculars, we came down here, of course, we got approval, we got approval, excuse me. And it was supposed to be that something had arrived at the Kingston Wharf, and I was not able to tell the audience or the viewers what it was. What I recalled was, you see these things in the newspaper, news media, you see them even in movies, but you have absolutely no idea how big they are until you actually see them working. And I remember when I entered and I saw them working, that is when it really hit me about how logistics work, where everyone has to work in tandem, there has to be this efficient, effective flow of communication as well as equipment. And we're so happy to announce that we have 19 new straddle carriers. A round of applause, please, for Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited. What's also interesting is that of the 19, five are hybrids, which means that as long as we continue to expand and improve and develop, what we also want to do is ensure that we are contributing positively to the environment. And so five of the 19, we're gonna look and see how these carriers are operating to then invest in more. So why is this expansion important? Well, because we believe in investment in development. We believe in the increase in productivity, efficiency, reliability, security of domestic and transshipment operations. And ultimately, we want to position Jamaica as the logistics hub of choice. Do we agree? Yeah. All right, so I'm excited to always find out more. And therefore, at this time, I would like to welcome the CEO of Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited, Captain jean J. Mayuyeski, to kindly deliver the welcome. Please make him welcome. The, the most, oh, oh, okay. The most honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister, Senator Abon Hill, the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Professor Honorable Gordon Shirley, Ms. Christine Kabu, Chairman of KFTL, distinguished guests, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I forgot it, but now I'm correcting myself, so welcome very much. Since CMA CGM, one of the largest line, began operation in the Kingston Terminal in 2016. It has consistently supported the terminal development, not only in a huge and massive investment, which we have an example right now here next to us with the new uh, Stradicaris, but also ensuring that KFTL volume constantly grows as a one of our major client. Despite the COVID-19, and the issues surrounding the global logistic. The KFTL is a one of 10 top most rising and uh, uh, container terminals in the 2001. In the year of 20 to 22, KFT vol KFTL volume grow 28%. It's meaning that from roughly one and a half million thousand TU to Two millions TU. The number, the number of our employees also grows, ma grows massively. In the last two years, we have employed 220 people. With the support of the Terminal Link, our shareholders, the long-planned development plan of the terminal has been established, and it will further strengthen the position and the performance of a 
chairman now in the region. Professor Gordon Shirley and the entire PAJ team. Thank you very much, especially for our partnerships in the last two years. We really appreciate working with you. The government intention to increase Jamaica's special economic zone are supported by our plans to grow. We work together towards a common goal and it's a prime example of the perfect cooperation between the public and, and the private investors. The past, uh, the last year proven to be difficult and we still face some feedback, f uh, setback. But thanks to our hard work and persistent and especially thanks to excellent and hard working our staff, we are still growing. Let me take this opportunity to thank our KFTL crew, which is here. It's the hard work allowing us to still progress. KFTL will continue to grow and will continue to support the Jamaican, and, uh, uh, Jamaican economy and also will become one of the most important terminals in the region. Thank you very much. This is why I kept on my, this is why I kept on my hard hat. Now, um, I don't like when the applause is stingy, you know. I don't know if you heard when the CEO said that um, Kingston Freeport employed 220 people and everyone just looked at him. And I just thought that something is, that is something that we should be celebrating. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why. Because in this, maybe in this past year, I've had the opportunity of hosting events where the Prime Minister has been the keynote. We've had the Honorable Aubin Hill as the keynote. Dr. Nigel, Honorable Dr. Nigel was also the, the keynote. And uh, a common theme when all of them speak is not just about boosting our economy and developing our country, but creating jobs. And not just creating jobs based on numbers, but jobs that actually improve the quality of our citizens' life. So whenever you come into a space and you hear an employer saying, we employed people and a substantial amount, I think that's when we say, big up, job well done. We're on the right path. <laughs> so Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited just wants to ask a couple of questions. I don't have any gifts to give away. This is just like school's challenge quiz though. Do, does anyone here, and of course, you're not eligible if you work for KFTL, TL. how high is a straddle carrier? Anybody? How high? They're right beside us. How high? Just take a wild guess. I have a student in the back stand. How high do you think a straddle carrier is? 160 feet. By the way, give him a round of applause. He was the first hand up. Confident as ever. 160 sounds very high. Do we have any other takers? How high do you think the straddle carrier is? It is 41 feet and 66 inches. So you weren't, you were off by just a, just a smidgen, just a smidgen. But thank you so very much for participating. So we understand the importance. We also want to hear from special partners who help to make all of this work. So at this time, ladies and gentlemen, kindly put your hands together as we welcome Professor the Honorable Gordon Shirley, President and CEO, Port Authority of Jamaica. Thank you very much, Madam Master of Ceremonies. And since I'm only given three minutes, uh, I, I, all protocols have been observed, uh, the most honorable prime minister, but there are a few partners that I must pause to acknowledge. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the work and relationship that we have with the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce under the leadership of the honorable Aubin Hill. Uh, I must also recognize the Commissioner of Customs, who is a major partner with us in the activities here. Uh, in, in the maritime sector. 
There is Mr. Barrington Dawes, who represents the 1,200 employees here. The 220 who have been employed and the 900 who have uh, continued. We have the representatives, we have the Raw Martins, who was critical to the original uh, finalization of the concession agreement, and Mr. Martin Masson, from, uh, who is now responsible, along with Mrs. Cabo, for the, uh, all the assets in, the, in, in CMA, CGM, including this port. And finally, we have a number of agents, which I can't single out, for all of our major partner lines, the lines that operate out of, uh, out of here. Just wanted to single out those persons for special mention. Prime Minister, as you are aware, we are, there has been a hiatus in the visits from CMA CGM uh, resulting from the pandemic. So we are delighted to have Mrs. Cabo, our Senior Vice President from CMA CGM back in the island uh, to discuss not just what is happening now, but, but the future. In 2016, Prime Minister, we entered into the public-private arrangement to make the port of Kingston unmistakably the most competitive port in the region. There are a number of things that were earmarked for KFTL to do. There are some things that were earmarked for PAJ to do in order to realize that. Since I only have two, uh, two minutes and 45 seconds left, uh, <laughs> I wanted to use the rest of the time to provide uh, a, a report to our, an update to our stakeholders. And I see in, in our audience as well, uh, the, uh, Anthony Hilton, who is the MP for the area, but, but much more than that, he was also quite instrumental in the establishment of a vision for uh, uh, this becoming a major hub. The capital investment program that we embarked on in 2026 uh, give, had to be undertaken by CMA CGM. Anybody thinking back to 2016, the government had established a macroeconomic and fiscal program which would, would have prohibited the government from providing the necessary uh, support in the, ter in, in the form of guarantee for loans that would be required for the PAJ to invest. And we had to do this because of the Panama Canal. And the targets were to deepen the inner channel to a depth of 15.6, to reinforce and refurbish 1,200 meters of key wall, of, of key, key, to install a modern terminal operating system and to optimize the capacity to achieve, to double the capacity. The results have been that we have had 178 million spent on the infrastructure, meaning the dredging, the pavement, the workshop extension, all of that has been spent. 54 million has been spent on equipment, aside from the 19 straddle carriers you see here, another 10, so 29 straddle carriers have been acquired, along with two gantry cranes, uh, 19, 19 terminal tractors, six empty container handlers, six road heads, and 14 forklifts. There, and another 16 million has been spent on new information systems, primarily a new terminal operating system, one of the most modern in the world, as well as C security systems, CCTV systems. The CEO has already told you that the volume has doubled, has gone from just over a million TEUs to close to 1.8 million TEUs. Most of this occurring in the last two years. The maintenance, uh, for, just to run a terminal like this, the maintenance activities are very critical and the preventative maintenance compliance fell during the early period but has moved up to 72%. 72% is not where we want to be, but it's a lot better than the 40% that we inherited, and we want to move all the way into the 90s. The jobs, you've already heard that the employment has grown by 33 and a third percent, and I would say, since this is an update, the labor situation is stable. Uh, we have a good working relationship between the union and, and the terminal head. And you've also heard that we have, the terminal has moved up in the top 100 ranking globally. And the question was asked by me of, of the Prime Minister, when are we going to be the top terminal in the Caribbean? And I told him, soon, 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 sir. Uh, <laughs> 
we will soon get there. <coughs> the, on the side of the PAJ, the port community system has been installed and is fully functional. The investments, and we have won several awards for that. The uh, investments in security, which are funded through the Port Authority, we would say that this terminal is probably, at this point, has the best security system in, in the region, but we have still a long way to go uh, to improve on that. We have weathered the storm with the congestion that has occurred more, most recently. And so, Prime Minister and other stakeholders, the teamwork between the terminal, the Port Authority, and all of the other stakeholders in the, in the community have improved and will be, will be important for the future. The public-private partnership has delivered the results that were consistent with the plan. And now, having achieved those plans, we have to establish new plans because we are still a long way from being where we want to be as a terminal. We look forward to that working relationship with uh, Mr. With, with our CEO and with Carlos, the uh, COO, and the other members of the team. And the results suggest that if we maintain the trajectory that we are on, the targets which we have established for this sport will be established well within a reasonable time frame. Uh, and we can define that how we will, but certainly within the next five years, we'll see a lot happening at this terminal. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much, Prof. Thank you for the overview and for providing us with, with even more context. Now, Prof said, soon, soon. I saw my Prime Minister scribbling, and I just want to take the opportunity to remind the good professor that the reward for good work is more work. But I thought my biggest takeaway listening to his delivery um, is, is just that it takes investment, it takes cash, it takes capital to grow to develop, to expand, to create, to build. And he certainly spoke about the power of partnership and collaboration. I mean, I know uh, Walker is here, the customs boss, representing just one of many agencies that helped to keep this ecosystem alive and going. How wide is a straddle carrier? So we established that it is 41 feet high, 66 inches, right? 41 feet, 66 inch inches. How wide is it if you look across there Anybody wants to take a guess? I have another student in the back. Say it louder. 15 feet. The width is 16 feet, 20 inches. Fantastic job, young man. 16 feet, 20 inches. And in fact, um, just something that I thought was worth mentioning. When I came and I met um, some of the, the, the personnel earlier and I asked them about, you know, the operators, I asked them, do you have any females who operate? And they said, absolutely. And I'm going to go on record for repeating what the gentleman said. He said that, in fact, the, the female operators um, are even sometimes regarded as better. Come and fight me. But he said... Because apart from just the technical ability, there's an addition to it. Apart from the technical ability, it is the, the managing, the maintenance, the taking care of the investment. So I thought that it was worth uh, mentioning that we have not just male operators, but we also have female operators. And I think that also should deserve a round of applause to show diversity. Of course, when I asked how can one learn to drive one of these, um, these, these straddle carriers, they said I'd have to apply for the job, get the job, then get the training. Who is HR? Is HR here? Hi, bestie. How are you? So the celebration continues. We now invite Ms. Christine Cabo, Executive Vice President of Operations and Group Assets, CMA, CGM, and Chairman of KFTL, to bring her remarks, please make her welcome. Good uh, morning, uh, everybody. Good morning, most honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister, Senator, the honorable Obin Hill, Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, 
Professor the Honorable Gordon Shirley, President and CEO of the Port Authority of Jamaica, Mrs. Commissioners of Custom, good morning to you. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I am extremely happy, very honored to be with you here today for this very important event with the inauguration of the new 19 uh, straddle carriers to the port of, uh, of, uh, of Kingston. And I'm so happy to have traveled all the way from Marseille to be with you today. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, COVID prevented us from, from traveling, but I'm very glad to meet again uh, known faces and, and to be uh, on this terminal. A lot has happened over the past two years in this terminal, uh, thanks to the determination of the team. And I would like to pay a tribute, please, to all the uh, office workers of KFTL, the dock workers, the port workers, because the past two years have been very difficult, very tense for logistic and supply chain. Thank you for making it happen. Thank you for keeping the terminal up and ready. Thank you. Okay. It has been seven years since CMA CGM uh, terminal league struck an agreement with the government of Jamaica, granting us the opportunity to operate the Kingston container terminal through a 30-year concession. Um, and we are very happy to have accomplished such a work that we need to invest again and again to keep up with the growth. Uh, these 19 strategic carriers are an important step, but, and I was discussing uh, this morning with uh, the Prime Minister and, and uh, also the CEO of the Port of Jamaica, um, there's more to come. There's more to come for the de development of this beautiful terminal uh, because the growth is there and there is uh, the willingness to continue the good work and, and, and give a uh, prominent uh, place in the region to uh, the, the Kist Kingston as a hub for the Caribbean and for uh, uh, north-south uh, trade flows between uh, the Americas. Um, we know that the container terminal of KFTL is a major actor, major player in the Jamaican economy. We are fully aware of the responsibility of the mission, which is ours, and everybody working on this terminal is fully dedicated to, to make this happen. This investment here, which is worth uh, uh, more than $20 million, is definitely essential to KFTL plans to increase the terminal productivity in a safe, because safety is paramount and reliable manner. Uh, it has you know, already been said that five of them are hybrid units, so I'm not going to expand on that, but be aware that we are fully determined to continue on the roadmap to, towards decarbonization and that uh, more investment will come to make this possible. Our partnership with the Port of Jamaica, the Port Authority of Jamaica, and all the stakeholders, port stakeholders in this region uh, has been excellent, very constructive. We have found support. We have found friendship. Uh, we have found uh, a con constructive relationship to achieve what we have achieved today, and again, to continue to, to, to achieve even bigger, uh, bigger, bigger, bigger goals. So we look forward to continuing to, uh, uh, pro, 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 uh, to make Jamaica one of the most prominent hubs of the of the region. We are firmly set on the road for the future. We will continue to develop a long-term plan uh, which will increase productivity, competitiveness, uh, strengthen the regional position. We are definitely committed to the country on behalf of CMA CGM, on behalf of Terminal Link, uh, on behalf of um, uh, the, 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 the full uh, port community. Um, we also uh, anticipate to develop into logistics because shipping and logistics go hand in hand and ports constitute a major um, uh, place where logistics and, 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 and shipping can really grow and bring uh, added value, bring um, prosperity uh, to the region and to the, and to the port of Kingston. So thank you very much again. Uh, for being here today. I'm very happy, uh, so proud of these uh, beautiful new straddle carriers and 
so ambitious on uh, the continuing of the writing this beautiful story together. Thank you very much. Finders keepers. Oh. oh, I was just about to say finders keepers. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Miss Cabo. You know, bienvenue et félicitations. There are three, there are three major takeaways when I listened to her, um, her remarks a while ago. She spoke about the chain, the value chain. It's not just really about the operators or even the senior managers or C-suite, but every single person who has anything to do with the operations is a part of that value chain. C, the, another C, is constructive relationships and having those relationships with partners, collaborators, internal persons is absolutely key when you want to build and construct. Commitment, commitment to country as well as the vision of said country. And lastly, competitiveness, again, positioning Jamaica as the hub for the region. Thank you so very much for that. Now we have some very special guests in the audience and it's one thing to have a good company that is profitable. It's another thing to have a company that believes in the environment, but it's also a social aspect. And Kingston Freeport Terminal is really big on taking care of communities that are a part of their area. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for students of Greenwich Town Primary School. But I know I rule my destiny So no matter how you try You can never change my mind I know we've got gotta a be lost in fly So can I, so can I Watch out now, this a baby caterpillar member say you can fly Do hey. no, watch a mosquito and a sunfly Do no, she don't and complain get up and try so Anyway, the whole universe come fly I work for your goals and build them Take time and sharp me skills them On your dream don't make no one kill them Them soon see a week Affirm yourselves. I am a beautiful person. I am what I see myself to be. Whatever the mind can conceive, I can achieve. I am healthy and happy. I am alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I am prosperous and successful. <laughs> I am getting better and better. 
I am a winner. I am a life alert awake enthusiastic. I am a life alert awake enthusiastic. I am a life alert awake. Alert awake a life. I am a life alert awake enthusiastic. Yeah. So no matter how you try, you can never change your mind. I know if caterpillars can fly, so can you, so can you. I know if caterpillars can fly, so can you, 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 you. I know if Caterpillars can fly, so can you, so can you, yeah. I know if caterpillars can fly, so can you. I know we can do a much better job than that. I absolutely enjoy that we got song, we got a little bit of poetry, we got stir fry, we got a little bit of DJ. Um, what I appreciated was the affirmations, the word of affirmations. It's so important for our children to believe that they can and to see themselves as winners. Certainly the gentleman who took out his like hundred dollar, two hundred, and him said, I am prosperous. And considering the prime minister always speaks about prosperity, I mean, it just makes sense. But again, we want to absolutely always support and celebrate companies that again have the social arm. And so to find out that Kingston Freeport Terminal also assists near port communities, it's just, it's just cherry, it's just the cherry on top, right? Can we kindly give them another round of applause? I just would like to officially welcome um, and to acknowledge the presence of His Worship, the Mayor, Senator Council Delroy Williams, Mayor of Kingston. Thank you so very much for joining us. So as we've been going along with the program, we've just been asking questions just to see how familiar you are with the straddle carriers. How many people does it take to operate the straddle carrier? What say you? One. And how much does a straddle carry away? A woman goes out. Oh. How much does it weigh? Just a guess, just in tons. How much do you think? Just shout out any number. You won't get in trouble. Any takers? 400 tons. You were the gentleman who said 160 feet? I like how you see big. You see a big picture. I like it. 62 tons is what the straddle carrier actually weighs. I want to also just thank the students of Greenwich, uh, Greenwich Town Primary School for participating, for not being afraid to let your voice be heard. Never you change. Any room you go into, if you have a question, ask it. And if you have an answer, give it, even if it may not necessarily be the correct one. So ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the end of the program in terms of the formalities and the speeches. And I've told you, I've had the privilege of hearing this particular keynote speaker, the dreams, the visions he has, but also the reports of the things that have been executed, the things that have been done, which tells us that we're not just about talking, but we're about doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I take Great pleasure in inviting our keynote speaker for this morning. He's known affectionately as the builder for the right reasons, the most honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica. Please make him welcome. Thank you very much, Terry. Still, good morning, everyone. I want to give uh, some context as to why I'm here uh, at a ceremony which seems fairly routine to inaugurate straddle carriers uh, as Prime Minister. First, um, let me say that this is a, a very important achievement that should not be diminished. It's a $20 million 
investment, which is significant, whichever ministry, whichever minister is inaugurating it, this is a significant investment in Jamaica. Secondly, I happen to be the Minister of Economic Growth and Job Creation. So I'm not here primarily in my role as Prime Minister, but in my role as Minister of Economic Growth and Job Creation, under which the Port Authority falls. And the Port Authority, of course, is the lead partner in this public-private partnership with um, our private sector partner, CMA CGM. And the Port Authority owns the port. And uh, CMA CGM is our faithful operator. Now, something was said earlier that since the start of this partnership, 200 new employees have been added to the staff operations here, approximately. Now, when you hear the statistic that unemployment is going down in Jamaica, sorry, that, that's not correct. That's co yes, it's, it's, yes, unemployment is going down in Jamaica. Employment is going up. And there, you know, there is this sense of things are not going right. Always there is this sense which forms the kind of base perception of the society. That even when things are going right, we miss it. I noticed the silence when the announcement was made. And thank you, Terry, for insisting on applause for it. Because the truth is, it is not all bad. And every single day in Jamaica, something good is happening. Every day. The statistic should not be questioned in terms of our unemployment rate going down because your government took a decision that we are going to give a concession on the operations of the port. And I want to take a minute to explain that. The decision was made across administrations. The considerations happened across administrations. And I remember when the idea was first posited in the public domain, the response was, Lord, we're going to give a report. There was fear and trepidation in the public that somehow a public asset would be taken away from the benefit of the public to the exclusive benefit of the private sector. And I can understand that fear and suspicion because our history has been that we have not always benefited in public-private partnerships. And governments are not always able to properly police joint ventures with the private sector. Indeed, there are several joint ventures with the private sector in which the public have not benefited. But I'm happy to say this is not one of them. Since we have given the concession, which is a 30-year concession, starting in 2016, the capacity of the port has approximately doubled. That is significant. The question, I, yes, I would. For the doubters, the retort would be then, couldn't the government have done that? Couldn't the port authority have made the investments in straddle carriers and done that? Maybe they could. 
I'm certain they could find $20 million on their balance sheet. But it is more than just straddle carriers. You see, we need to understand, and I'm now speaking to people who doubt the wisdom of public-private partnerships, is that the role of government is not to be operator of everything. The role of government is to empower private initiative. And when I say private initiative, immediately the thought goes to private sector. No. Private initiative resides in every citizen of the country. You can be empowered to become such a great innovator and operator of something that all you require from the government is a fair, transparent, regulatory environment. CMA, CGM has deep experience in shipping and logistics, years of experience more than we have in terms of our history and capacity. And so it was a good idea to partner with this experience, but I'm also reminded to say that uh, CMA, CGM has deep pockets as well. <laughs> to be able to make these kinds of investment so that the Port Authority does not have to take these funds that are being spent on this, it could then take these funds and use them on something else, such as the development of new ports, such as making investments in a port in Port Royal, such as looking at the development of Portland. That is the role of the Port Authority, to go into those new development areas and de-risk them and leave these areas where there is enough knowledge and expertise in the commercial space to manage them and allow them to manage them. But of course, it's not for free. The public gets returns into the coffers of the country. And I can stay here and safely say that the concession agreement was well negotiated and Jamaica is benefiting from having that agreement. There are many other areas in Jamaica where the public-private partnership model should be pursued. As I've said, there is great reason why the public should be suspicious. Great reason because of our history of exploitation. Great reason because governments have not always been as, I'm going to choose my words carefully here. But they have not always been good stewards. They have not always managed and interrogated and acted always in the best interest. But what has this government done and previous administrations? We have developed a public-private partnership policy. And it is a robust policy. And we continue to evaluate that policy and improve that policy so that when we get into PPPs, the public can have confidence that our public-private partnerships will be well managed and that the public's interest will be protected. And I want to hold this up as an example. Now, I'm saying all of this because the chairman of the PAJ and uh, the general manager, the president of the PAJ, can't let me down. They have to make sure 
that the commitment that I'm giving holds true. But Christine has become my best friend here now. And she's not going to let me down either. So I know that the partnership is going to be a strong one. One that will be meaningful and long-lasting and beneficial to both parties. Because it is not just these straddle carriers that we are investing in. There is more to come. The straddle carriers will improve efficiency. A port is nothing but the ability to load and unload containers as quickly as possible. That's all a port is. And if you're not able to load and unload as quickly as possible, you could have the greatest expanse of land. In fact, you could have had a, a thousand straddle carriers. People are not going to want to use your port. It's about efficiency. And uh, this will help with efficiency. Further investment in technology will help with efficiency. And the availability of more space will help with efficiency. So we, were, we are discussing possibilities of expansion. So as Minister of Economic Growth and Job Creation, as part of this continuum of the creation of the logistics and shipping industry as an important plank of the Jamaican economy, the government is looking at ways in which we can expand shipping and logistics operations in our economy. In the same way that we have been instrumental in the expansion and institutionalization of the uh, BPO industry in Jamaica. So the government, through the PAJ, is looking at other lands in this area that could become available to support the expansion of the port and the expansion of the logistics operations which are associated. And you will hear more about those plans, uh, certainly when I make my budget presentation in a few months' time next year. These are plans that are, uh, some of them are in the early stages, but some of them are quite mature plans. So you will, you will hear more about what we will do. As I look on at these straddle carriers, I see young men and women in their hard hats and in their high visibility vests. I suspect some of them are drivers and operators. These are the faces of the beneficiaries of the investment. These are the faces of the people who are being employed, who take home an income as a result of good government policy. A port job is a highly sought after job, even if you are just sweeping up the tarmac on the port. Highly sought after. And we need to create more of these jobs. So my purpose here is well served if you understand that I'm here speaking to you now as a minister supervising the expansion of the port and logistics industry in Jamaica using the investment of $20 million in these straddle carriers which will improve the efficiency of the port as a signal of the strengthening, the deepening, and the expansion of this new plank of the Jamaican economy. I see uh, my neighbor and friend Tony Hilton here. He has been an evangelist and advocate for it as well. Of course, Tony dreamt it, I visioned it, and executed. So, <laughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I appreciated that last part. Especially when I came in this green dress, you know, and I was like, okay, this is patriotic. 
you know, my prime minister is going to be here. I'm going to take out this green. You know, it's about the country and everything. And then I got the orange protective gear. And I said, well, it is for the best interest, regardless of, you know, where you stand. But well, thank you so very much for that, um, PM. Thank you for always reminding us of the importance of the development of Jamaica. Thank you for reminding us that to every person who is a naysayer who says that this will never work, that it can't work, that we have people who are working assiduously to ensure that it does. Thank you for reminding us of the power of the PPPs, the public-private partnerships policy. And for finally reminding us that efficiency, reliability, productivity, scale, safety, integrity, and credibility are a must. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could kindly give another round of applause for the fantastic <laughs> Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited. And so now we are going to move into the ribbon cutting ceremony. I'm going to invite our Prime Minister, Ms. Christine Cabot. Professor the Honorable Gordon Shirley, Captain Majewski, Samuel Black, who is a straddle carrier operator, and Sharice Allen, electrical engineer, if they could kindly make their way to the back by the ribbon so that we can conduct the ribbon cutting ceremony. And of course, we invite all of us to be a part of that celebration as well. The acquisition of 19 new shadow carriers, the overcome of the 19 new power factors, is more efficient because we always want to ensure that we're making a positive contribution to the environment. No one knows if you take your photos actually, but we also invite you for some live session. Thank you so much for spending your morning with us here at the Jason Football Channel Limited.